This close relation between the wind, the mountainous terrain and the water has created countless ecosystems in the Canaries. Of all these, the most complex and most fascinating is undoubtedly the ecosystem of the lands of permanent mist. Here, the Lowry Silver grows surrounded almost constantly by clouds. Many of these species inhabited the Mediterranean era during the Tertiary era. The glaciers arrived in the Quaternary and brought with them new plants from the north. The invaders were more resistant to the cold and soon replaced the original forest. In the archipelago, however, the good climate and the state of isolation brought time to a halt. As happened in Arthur Conan Doyle's novel, The Lost World, the Canaries did not undergo any notable changes and the flora continued its evolution far away from the problems on the continent. Thanks to this, we can still contemplate the forests that covered Europe millions of years ago. In many places, the forest is so thick that hardly any light reaches the ground, so only moss and ferns can grow there. The vegetation obtains from two to four times as much water from the mist as from the rain. For this purpose, it has developed shiny perennial leaves which catch the drops of water and channel them to the tip. From there they fall to the ground, where they can be absorbed by the roots. During the summer, almost all the water the plants receive comes from this source. The wealth of fauna is just as spectacular as the flora. There are a large number of endemic species of reptiles and amphibians, and almost 60% of the invertebrates in the forests are exclusive to the archipelago. The island of La Gomera has the most extensive and best conserved Lauri-Silva forest in the archipelago. It occupies the upper part and is the principal nucleus of the Garajone National Park. Its 2,500 hectares catch so much water from the mist that they have more than they need. The excess filters through the ground and springs up in the little streams which irrigate the land lower down. It is here that the species that makes this strange sound lives. From time immemorial, the inhabitants of La Gomera have communicated by whistling, a unique language which is exclusive to the island. Thanks to this, it was possible for people to speak from one ravine to another without having to meet, something which was very important in a place with such a rugged landscape. However, fewer and fewer people use the whistling language. The improvement in communications and means of transport are hard competitors for this cheap, traditional type of mobile phone. The residents of La Gomera channel the water that comes down from the Lowry Silva forest and use it to cultivate the lower slopes. There are no flat lands here, so all crops have to be planted on terraces and small plots. In many cases, all the work is done by hand. In spite of this, the Gomeros can consider themselves lucky. In Lanzarote, the eruption of 1824 covered the island in ash. 
farmers were obliged to dig down to reach their original lands in order to plant their vines again. We do not know for sure who were the original inhabitants of the Canaries. In prehistoric times, it was inhabited by African tribes, ancestors of the Berbers of today. Lanzarote, which is only 70 kilometers from the continent, probably acted as a platform for the conquest of the other islands. Over the course of time, successive waves of immigrants occupied the Canaries. Guanches, Bimbaches, and Benaorites established their respective kingdoms. Their cultures developed in isolation from the continent until the development of trade and navigation in the 13th century made Europe turn its attention to the archipelago. The growing interest in the islands led finally to their conquest in the 15th century. The different tribes were brought under the rule of the Spanish crown and ended up adopting the European lifestyle. Of the ancient cultures, only a few pictures and constructions, such as this monastery at Valeron, remain. The food produced in the island of Gran Canaria was stored in numerous silos dug out of the rock. Today, they are just a tourist attraction.